over the radio when I had my disagreement with uh, Jay the Gospel Kit, where he was on the radio and he was he was saying that who can tell me that Jesus didn't die for anyone, for everybody, for everybody? Who can tell me that? I dare it. So I called up and I said he didn't, and he hung me up. And uh, so when I got to the radio station, I confronted him. And I, says, I said, well, let me help you out here, because you're off. You're in error. And I was trying to show him from the Word of God, and he kept saying, I won't receive that. I won't receive that. I said, so you're not going to receive the Word of God right here. And I just got him ready to receive it. And then that guy came in the door, right there. And what happened was, um, things got real noisy. And the next thing I knew, the station manager called me up uh, because the receptionists were afraid that there was going to be a fist fight. <laughs> so, anyhow, but uh, we got it. We did get it all straight now. But anyhow, in that process, that station manager said to me, you mean to tell me, can you tell me that Jesus didn't die for everybody? And I said, that's exactly what I'm telling you. He said, well, I'd like to see that in the Bible. I said, that's good, because I'd like to show it to you. And that's what I did. I took him right to here. Are you ready? This is just one of the passages. Starting in verse 28 of Romans 8. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Okay, now, all things work together for good to them that love God, and to who? To them that are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. So, who did he predestinate? Those that he foreknew. To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among the brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Who did he call? He called those that he predestinated. This is very specific. You know, not, not leaving any room for any error. He's being very specific here. Yeah. And whom he called, them he also justified. Whom did he justify? Those that he called. Who did he call? Those that he predestinated, right? Mm -hmm. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So who did he glorify? He glorified those that he justified, and he justified them that he called, and he called them that he were predestinated. It goes all the way back, doesn't it? Very specific. Yeah. No room here for any error, is there? No. Well, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So it kind of sounds like what Jesus said in John 10, huh? Mm -hmm. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with all him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Remember, again, we have been elected. Now, I'm going to tell you, too, because it's going to get done. Uh, for all the real real saints, you're going to hold an office during the Millennial Kingdom. That's right. Scripture teaches we are going to be, just like David is going to be holding his office as king, we're going to be kings and governors and mayors and senators. Maybe not using those names, but it will be the equivalents during the Millennial Kingdoms. How many of you knew that? That's what Scripture teaches. A lot of you thought we'd just be floating around on clouds and eating Philadelphia bread and cream cheese like you see in the commercial. No, no. that ain't going to happen that way. We're going to be very, very busy during the Millennial Kingdom. Not only that, but we're going to be judges. We're going to be judges. We're going to judge the world. We'll be judging angels. Now, he goes on to say, who is he that condemneth? It is not Christ. Is it not Christ that died, yet rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? You know, one of the things that people, <coughs> and I heard a lot of your uh, your word of faith preachers that are preaching, it's a false doctrine, and that is that the Lord Jesus, that his work is finished, that he has set down, and his work is finished, and from here on up, it's all the Holy Ghost. Folks, Christ intercedes for us daily. If he didn't intercede for us daily, you'd be in more hurt than you realize. Amen. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Now think about this or just 
distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors. For I am persuaded that neither death, now, now think about this, he takes you to the entire realm of death, there's nothing in all the past and all of death that can separate you from the love of God. In other words, can take your salvation. Nor life, nothing in all of life. Nor angels, there's no angels out there powerful enough to do that. Or principalities, that word there, principalities, is used also as the word for magistrates. Nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. In other words, there was nothing in the past, nothing in the present, and nothing in the future that can separate us from the love of God, or can take our salvation. Nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, that encompasses the entire universe, folks. You got God's word on it. Amen. There's nothing in the entire universe that can separate you from God. Amen. Now, that's good enough for me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Okay? <clears throat> Verses 1 through 3. Dare any of you having a matter against another go before go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world should be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know you not that you shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Now think about that. Those of us that make it into eternity, those that are truly saved, will be judging angels. Angels are some powerful, powerful individuals, folks. Think about that. One angel can take down an entire country when he wants. We'll be judging angels. That's an awesome, awesome thought for those of you that are registers with here. And then, <clears throat> I want to close by going to Revelation chapter 22. In Revelation chapter 22, 1 through 5. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Clear as crystal. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. Clear as crystal, you see. Because, for a couple reasons, this river, I will never have any problem with erosion like I have at my home. I won't have to get out there, Kevin and I, and work and fight that erosion. And I don't have to worry about anything in this river being unpure. It's going to be the pure and it's going to be clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and out of the Lamb. And this river divides into four. It goes all over the entire globe. This river will feed the entire earth. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there was a tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Twelve different kinds of fruit that Every month. Hallelujah. And the leaves of the tree were for the healings of the nation. And there should be no more curse. Here we go. This is the real good stuff. Oh, yeah. No more curse. That means no death. Mm -hmm. That means no cancer. Praise God. That means no Ebola. Mm -hmm. That means no arthritis. Mm -hmm. That means no liberalism. Amen. All right. That means no property taxes. No death taxes. Okay. Are we going? Keep going. Okay. No electric bills? No Obama. No gas bills? No. Boy, it just keeps getting better and better, don't it? Yes, sir. No cold, no snow. I'm not going to miss it. No cold, no snow. All right. Okay. No pain, no abortion, no job replacements, 
No hip replacements. No red light cameras. Oh, no ugliness. <laughs> no ugliness. <laughs> no speeding tickets. Oh, I hear you.